So I wanted to discuss some game boxes with you from the Atari ST and Amiga. Mainly Atari ST, although the only thing that identifies the Atari ST over the Amiga is normally a, a little sticker like this, a little format sticker, because they couldn't be bothered to make boxes for all the different formats. One box, slap a sticker on it. Here we have Thunder Jaws. We have the generic red and blue people on the front. Always got to have a red and blue one. Take the plunge, dive into the deep and confront cybernetic sharks, enemy divers, and all manner of evil. The work of a devilish Madame Q. Madame Kuro? Your mission, infiltrate her base. A mm, euphemism, perhaps? Rescue hostages and destroy her subterranean fortress. Yeah, it could still be a euphemism. Pick up flamethrowers, defeat the hordes of henchmen, and battle with armies of monstrous genetic mutants. The furious shootout gives no respite. The action is non stop from the start of this fantastic multi level extravaganza. Gulping excitement to the very last bite. Yep, that is just a long euphemism, isn't it? Yeah. Next we have Warhead. It's like a head, but it's having a war. The most disturbing aspect of this conflict is that we do not know our enemy. We do not know their reasons for attacking us. We do not know who they are. Sounds pretty much like modern 21st century warfare. It is the middle of the 21st century and Earth seems to be doing exactly the same as it used to be. Next we have Transputer. Actual screenshots, although they're not of the game itself. They're from a different game. Amazing 3D action, 32 screens, multi-level entry, yeah, blocks, each with their own characteristics. One of them's called Tony. Ghouls and Ghosts, US got £19.95, that's a lot of money for a game from the late 80s, 1989 I think this came from. Arthur Returns, the Fearless, the fearless Knight is back in this stunning sequel to Ghosts and Goblins. Stunning if you like your games to be rock hard. Fallen Angel for the Atari ST by Screen7. Now this game involves some bloke who goes walking through subway trains which seems to be filled with some sort of warring gang situation. There's no occupants, there's no people on the train. These trains are purely here for fighting on. What a service. The trains on his patrol have been free from crime. He has seen to that. They don't look like it. The death of, green of his green beret brother from a drug overdose sent him over the edge. Seeking vengeance, he hounded drug dealers and showed no mercy when he caught them. So it sounds like he's starting this fight to me. Not the other way around. Cannon fodder. Now, if you look carefully, you'll see that there is a soldier in this box, huh? Oh yes, hidden amongst camouflage. It's like one of those magic eye pictures almost. Don't wait till you see the whites of her eyes. Don't, wait, don't kid yourself, it'll be over by Christmas. Don't try to shut out the screens and don't forget to wash your hands afterwards. This is a new policy guidance from the UK Army they give to new recruits. Gold Runner 2, this is one of the few games from this collection I remember well. My story, 50 years ago my grandfather, a brave and bold warrior, defeated a powerful force of space pirates single-handedly, well done, to secure a new world for the human race, who were fleeing from the now dead earth. Oh, didn't last for long then. With no concept of fear and reactions a little slower than the speed of light, Jesus Christ. Onslaught, one of my favourite games. Commodore, Amiga, and Atari ST. Bring peace to the warring kingdoms of Gargor. And you do that by walking around and killing the shit out of everyone in your way. Much like the Americans do with most of their current war campaigns. Let's bring peace by killing everyone. Tom and the Ghost. I like this sticker. Careful. Jesus. Loading FO Disk 1 2. Please switch off the computer. Insert the disk and switch on the computer. After 40 seconds, if you don't press any key, any fire button, or auto fire, the little screen will appear. The title screen will appear, even. Click then to load the program. Jesus Christ. Passive aggressive instructions. A very original game conception with excellent playability from our special envoy in Scotland. 
We learn today about the mysterious disappearance of a young American woman, Ellen Peppard, her seven years old son, Tom. Tom? Tom? <laughs> Fuck it. Moonfall with a very strange looking alien. It looks like aliens has gone drastically wrong. Yeah, it looks a bit grumpy. Grumpy bastard. Starship Starship Daedalus 1 is stranded on Frontier Alpha. The only way to escape is to buy your way out. Like it. Big run! From Storm. Pin to your seat. Ah, one of my favourite game boxes. Supremacy, your will be done. This is a fantastic great game. Government presents one of the most complicated challenges known to man. In order to run a single country efficiently, a leader has to control and ma manipulate a host of variables. Yep, they certainly do manipulate a lot of variables, don't they? So I've got some obscure games here. Somewhere in Europe lies one of the world's toughest schools. Yep, not the one I went to, that's for sure. A top secret training centre behind impenetrable barbed wire. Yeah, I'm not sure barbed wire is that impenetrable. And patrolled by wardens, armed to the teeth. Presumably with razor sharp braces. Football manager 2. The winning team. Five great games and block one blockbusting compilation. Atari ST. Good games on here, actually. We have Escape from the Planet of the Robot Monsters, which is a great game. Cyberball. Yeah. Vindicators, APB, good game, and Clax. And just for the um, marketing factor, a scandally clad woman. Woman. Lords of Chaos. Produced by the designers of the Laser Squad. Now, yeah, I would never have guessed. Laser Squad is a move taking, a move taking futuristic role playing game. You have to well, I would have never have guessed. A game where you take moves, employing state-of-the-art technology and firepower. Okay, next we have Trivial Pursuit. Blasteroids. One of the budget labels. All the kicks budget labels. There's Barbarian 2 with Wolf on the front, £7.99. There's Blasteroid, £7.99. I won't throw those on the floor, they're plastic, they might break. Thunderblade, great game on the Mega Drive, not so great for the Atari ST. Falcon, it's a mission disc, it's not the actual game. I don't have the actual game. Great. To be on top, the classic Commodore 64 game comes to the Atari ST and in the process gets 10 times worse. The Gold Collection. Th this is a Commodore 64. Doesn't belong in this series. Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. Generic artwork. I don't suppose you could have any other type of artwork for the front of this box. It would have to be all four turtles sitting and standing together. Fresh from the classic comics comes come Heroes in a Half Shell. Of course, if you're in America and you're looking at this thinking, Hero Turtles, it's because Ninja was deemed too violent in Britain in the early 90s. Steve Davis, World Snooker. And if you're American, you're probably thinking, who the fuck is Steve Davis? Unless you watch snooker. I don't know how many Americans watch snooker. Is it big in America? I doubt it. Pool. Like pool, don't you? I don't know. I'm guessing. Don't judge me. Five different games. Snooker, UK Pool, USA Pool. See, I told you like pool. UK Billiards and Carom Billiards. Not as good as Jimmy White's Whirlwind Snooker, but not a bad game. Colossus Chess. Actually quite a good game. I did enjoy the graphics on that. 3D. Bruce Willis, Hudson Hawk. WWF WrestleMania. The thrills and spills of the World Wrestling Federation brought to your screen. Thank fuck for that. Driller. Spectrum. 